Shreveport Police Union boss, Sergeant Dr. Michael Carter. Hey, Mr. Mike, welcome back to Keel. How you doing today? Hey, good morning. How are you? Man, there's lots going on. Just start us off. I'll ask you, you know, I'll, just, I'll, I'll fire the shotgun and just the big spread shot. What do you think? What's the status of the department right now? Uh, right now, this department needs some direction. We, we need to get focused on crime. We need to get focused on public safety. Uh, the politics need to cease. Uh, I know that there's a mayor's race going on, and right now that could be the farthest thing from the police officers' minds. We need to uh, uh, make Shreveport safer, and uh, we need the, the, the public out there that's expecting us and depending on us to have that peace of mind. And right now, I don't think they have it. When you say politics got to stop, politics got to end, do you think this is all the Crump thing with Mayor Tyler, everything that's going on? Do you see that as political? And what do you think the real story is? Quit using the police department as a political tool. They're there to provide public safety for the citizens of Shreveport. Get focused on crime. Let us do our job. Give us the resources to do our job. We've been habitually underfunded for years, and we've been we've been preaching this case, taking this case, posting videos. You can go to our uh, Facebook uh, web page. You can see all the videos that we've done over the last several months, all the information we put out. We, we requested meetings, begged for meetings from this mayor. Uh, they've not been given, and now you get to the state of crisis you're in now, it shouldn't surprise anybody. The police have been begging the police administration and the mayor's administration to get some things done, and they simply have just sat back and not done it. Okay, so let's narrow this down a little bit now. You said the police department has been used as a political tool in, say, the last week to 10 days. How has that happened? No, it's been a lot more than the last week to 10 days. All right, you go back to some of the statements she made yesterday on your station, on your show, uh, about how, why she chose Chief Trump, why she chose these things. That's not why you choose a chief. You choose a chief that's going to make Shreveport safer. Somebody that's got the knowledge, the skills, and the abilities to go out and to make the community that they've served in for 20-plus years a safer place for all the citizens. You don't lose citizens that way. You don't lose businesses that way. Uh, they, they get connected to the public, and the public needs to be connected to their police department. What did she say that was so offensive to you yesterday? There was a couple of things there that bothered me. Number one, she said that you could not fire somebody on sick leave or terminate somebody's employment. That's simply not true. Uh, civil service, and, and, and here's, here's the most offensive thing. I'm tired of, of people outside of the system who have no knowledge, and that includes mayors, okay, going back in history plus this one. Civil service does not prevent you from terminating anybody or disciplining anybody. It simply requires you to follow a due process. That's all it does. That's like saying someone that murders an individual in the United States of America can never be put on trial. Well, if you follow his due process rights, certainly he can. If you violate those rights, then you're going to be ineffective and there's going to be an acquittal. It's no different in, in, in police and fire civil service. Simply follow the due process. What we've had is we've had an administration that was too arrogant to follow the laws, so they've been unsuccessful at civil service, and so they think now, well, you know, if I tried, I'd just fail. I couldn't do it. Do not blame your inability on the fact that it's not possible, because that's not true. I've seen three, four police officers terminated while on sick leave. It was done correctly, it was done appropriately, and they no longer work here. You heard her say she lost faith in Chief Crump a while back. Are you disappointed that she didn't move on it then and now, so it looks way politically motivated now? Well, I, I have no sympathy for it now. We've tried to communicate with her, we've tried to communicate with her staff, her city attorney, her CEO. We, we've met with her one time, she's refused meetings after that. Look, we represent over 500 sworn police officers who voluntarily pay association dues. So if, if you think that we don't have our finger on the pulse of what police officers feel and think, we're, we're the vehicle for them. We're the voice for them if you let us in the door and let us talk to you. She and her administration has shut the police officers association out of talking to academy cadets for the last two academy classes. You cannot get anywhere by, by turning your fight towards the police. And let me tell you where it's got it. It's got Streetport in one of the most dangerous situations it's ever been in because you spend all your time trying to discipline police officers instead of moving forward and trying to take control of the criminal element of the city. Mr. Mike, who you got the bigger problem with, Mayor Tyler or Chief Crump? It, it goes hand in hand. Everyone wants to try to separate the two. I was called uh, a few months ago, and they said, uh, how do we keep Ollie Tyler and get rid of Alan Crump? And I was like, that's a political question. I don't entertain those. That's that's between you and whoever. And in when I hung up the phone, I thought, what a question. The mayor works uh, as the appointing authority. The chief works simply at the discretion of the mayor. You, you, you only get a chief through a mayoral selection. That's it. 
Now, they take a test, which is basically insignificant. You make a 75, you're on the list. Everything comes down to who that mayor thinks they can work with, who they think is going to do the best job. And she kept Willie Shaw, but then she hired Alan Crump. So at any given point, if she felt uh, a lack of confidence in him, she had every ounce of authority, every ounce of legitimate uh, power to remove him and replace him. But she didn't. Have you had discussions? In my opinion, that is an insult to the officers who have suffered through the last two or three years whenever she could have made a move based on her own inclination. Have you had discussions with Adrian Perkins? I'm hearing you're interested in maybe being the chief. No, I've talked to all the mayoral candidates. I've talked to everybody except Ollie Tyler because they requested a, uh, an appointment with me. Um, I've taken the test with chief in the past. Uh, I, I don't know now if I'll take it or not. I did not take it the last time. Listen, this is a very serious moment in Shreveport. And anybody who's chasing a title right now is chasing a rainbow. Because if you take that job, whether it's a substitute or whether it's a permanent job, you have got a 24-hour day, seven-day-a-week job on your hands, both internally and externally. These streets have got to get safer or Shreveport's going to be a ghost town. So you're not interested in the job at this moment? At this point, I'm not going to comment on that. I don't, I don't know that this interview is even about that. I know at this point, no one's offered me a job. Mr. Mike, you said a couple of seconds ago to, to sort of clarify for all of us, in fact, I wrote it down in reference to Mayor Tyler, too arrogant to follow the law. What law is that and what should be done about that? This is a statute. This is Title 33, 2500. You, you've got to follow the, the civil service due process laws in order to discipline firefighters and police officers. It's not, it's not something that prohibits discipline. Everyone who says that, oh, well, there's civil service, you can't file them. That is absolutely false. You're, you're simply saying that you don't know your job well enough to do your job. Your job is to manage within a fire and police civil service system. And, and if you'll take the time, you'll hire the right attorneys. If you'll do the right things, you can get it done. If, you're, if, if you go in on the field and you constantly lose, you constantly lose the game, are you going to change your game plan? Are you going to study something? Are you going to go look at some films? Well, you know what? I've seen an administration lose for four years in a row. I've seen one lose before that. But no one changes their game plan. Ah, this is my guy. I'm sticking by him. Well, you stuck by him. You stuck by him, and we suffered for it, police officers and citizens. I'm both. Chief Raymond now in charge. Can much, much really be accomplished? I mean, he's a substitute chief. He, you know, we got the election hanging over his head. What can he really do in the next 30 days? My advice is to get up early every day and work hard every day. A lot can be done in 30 days. What would you like to see him do? I'd like to see him make some internal changes. I'd like to see him start starting out some internal issues. But at the same time, we owe it to Shreveport to make Shreveport safer today. Not okay. 30 days from now, not 90 days from now, but today. What kind of Time internal changes, pardon me, Mike, what kind of internal changes are you talking about? We're stagnated. We're stagnated. We need new leadership. We need new leadership. We need new ideas. The, the, the folks we've got at the top are part of the past. They're not a part of the future. And, and anybody who doesn't see that, look at the history. Look at what's going on now. They're calling the plays. They're calling the games. Look, on any other team, you start firing defensive coordinators, offensive coordinators. You start firing quarterback coaches, and, and that's the equivalent of these leaders. You've got to start looking at who your team structure is, who is on that team, and who's failing. And, and then they come back and say, well, you know, um, they're senior and they're certified, and then uh, civil service won't let us fire them. Well, that shows me incompetence. You know, you, you said don't know a, how to get it done, ask somebody. You said a couple of seconds ago that you weren't inclined to be political, so, so asking for a mayoral endorsement probably, you're just not going to go there, huh? No, we're going for a mayoral endorsement Monday starting at 8 o'clock. We're going to run a 24-hour ballot. We're putting the mayor on the endorsement ballot for SPOA. I think that the union members uh, uh, deserve to have the right to have a say in who their, uh, their mayor is going to be, and uh, they're going to vote by secret ballot. And whoever gets the total number of votes is who I'm going to announce.